How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Killmark Collectors. Today, I dressed up for you guys because we're going to be blowing up the oldest Citadel in Eve Echoes, where I'm just recording this between meetings. Um, take your pick. <laughs> Either way, thanks so much for joining. And today, we are going to be debriefing the fight to push the oldest Citadel in Eve Echoes into Hull. It involved over 180 ships or so, and it was a ton of fun to be a part of. So let's undock, dive in, and look at blowing some stuff up. Here we go. Three or four days ago, we got a ping on Discord that said, hey, everybody, we're going to be going and helping out Pantheon to uh, push an enemy citadel into Hull. Now, what we didn't know at that time is some of the backstory, and that is that this particular citadel is the oldest one or the first one that was actually dropped in Eve Echoes. And it's interesting because some of the politics I don't normally get into, but um, basically what's been going on is in Vale, uh, no, uh, the Alliance has been pressuring corpse and pressuring alliances to drop Lunar. Um, this particular corporation or uh, alliance, HTP, did end up dropping Lunar, especially after there were a number of losses from uh, this past weekend. And so the HTP basically decided to switch sides in order to try to protect their Citadel. And we didn't really take kindly to that. <laughs> Politics are part of the game, and I'm not going to get into who's right or who's wrong. That's just the backstory in the context of this, uh, this particular fight. Now for this fight, we did end up jumping about 40 to 50 jumps uh, from our home up in Declan uh, down to uh, be able to support the Pantheon fleet. And so as a result of that, we weren't in our normal heavies. Um, we were actually uh, pretty light and fast in terms of uh, our fleet composition. Now I'll talk about the actual ships that were involved and uh, the, the way that the two fleets caught up to one another in just a moment. But before I do that, I do want to give a tip of the hat to know here. Um, they did a phenomenal job of making it as difficult as possible for us to get to this fight. As we were leaving Losec and getting into position to um, fight on the Citadel, they did a just masterclass when it comes to uh, using light dictors to delay a fleet or disrupt fleet movement. Um, what would happen is we would basically jump into a system. They had a light dictor that was cloaked, um, usually about 100 kilometers off of the gate. And then they would also have a uh, dictor sometimes uh, four or 500 kilometers away as well. And what they did is they basically would drop bubbles as soon as we jumped in. They would try to get that dictor out, but oftentimes it was a sacrificial dictor. And then when our fleet warped in, we would get stuck in that bubble. We would be close enough where we wouldn't be able to warp out to the gate so that uh, we had to either burn or we had to warp to a planet or something like that. Now, if we had been in battleships, this would have been a much bigger issue because as it was with mostly cruisers and battle cruisers, we almost didn't make it to the Citadel in time. I think when we ended up getting in system, there were only three or four minutes on the timer left. And so if we had been in bigger, slower ships, this type of delaying action could have won the battle right then and there. We could have counted this in a number of ways. What we ended up doing most of the time, though, was actually going from the uh, warp gate to a planet and then to the exit gate. Um, this just, again, gate kind of took us out of that line of the bubble, and we were able to successfully actually get beyond uh, that dictor. That being said, again, we lost a lot of time and they almost did their job of just keeping us from the station as a whole. So again, tip of the hat to know. So once we actually did get through all of those dictor bubbles and get on field, uh, let's just talk about the ships that were uh, setting this up to begin with. Now, uh, in terms of the enemy, they had 28 battleships, 23 battle cruisers. Uh, it looks like about eight cruisers and four frigates for a total of 63 ships. Pantheon's fleet had about 31 battleships, 32 battle cruisers, four cruisers, a couple extra frigates, about a dozen or so, and then some bubbles and things like that. Now, our fleet, we did not actually have any battleships. We were completely using cruisers and battle cruisers. Um, primarily, the battle cruisers and cruisers were the Guardians and the Lodgy. 
Um, and then the cruisers, again, we wanted that uh, fast maneuverability because we were a long way from home. Now, all of this being tallied up and, and totaled, there were about uh, 185 ships on grid at the time that I landed. Um, there were about 210, uh, 215 in local, so I don't know if the other ones were just cloaky scouts or, or what was going on, or if they were in station or anything like that. Um, it was it would have been pretty even. Um, I think Pantheon obviously did have a little bit of an edge in terms of their battle cruisers and uh, Lodgy support, I think, in particular. Um, but overall, it would have been a fairly even fight. And then with our lighter fleet coming in, acting as kind of almost skirmishers, um, we were able to, to help, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, when we actually first got on, on field here, you'll see us burning away from the bubble um, and uh, kind of positioning ourselves to the side here. Now, our director from the Pantheon uh, fleet commanders was to basically harass and, and focus on the Lodgy. And so as we were trying to get away from the main bubble so that we didn't get caught and engaged, we were moving out and, and using that speed of, again, the lighter cruisers. Now, as we started to realize where the enemy Lodgy bubble was, and it was positioned on basically the other side of the fight entirely, we decided to move back towards that area and it actually ended up warping off and then coming back in so that we were able to uh, kind of reposition a little bit and, and save some time without getting caught. Now, as we were moving, um, it was really important for us to be able to, to stay disengaged from that main blob. And you can see the, the Pantheon and the, uh, the No fleets um, really getting to grips very fast. In fact, if uh, we were, you know, kind of looking at the way that this flight devolved, you basically had a big blob in the middle of the battleships duking it out with one another, and then us and the enemy Lodgy um, kind of playing footsie a little bit here. <laughs> um, we were going back and forth and, uh, you know, kind of playing, I guess, cat and mouse, maybe a better term, um, but really just trying to get to them and, and keep them locked down and uh, engaged as much as possible. Now, as we move through here, you'll see us um, really be focusing on our positioning. Our FC did a fantastic job of being able to uh, keep us again at the appropriate range where we were able to engage, while also um, making sure that we were applying, tar applying damage to targets um, that may or may not have necessarily been uh, able to rep or able to realize that they were going down because they may be locked on other, uh, other targets like the main battleships or guardians that were involved in that big fight. As I mentioned earlier, our directive from Pantheon was basically just keep their Lodgy busy. And I think that we did that pretty well. We were able to get around, uh, again, the main bubble, really focus on taking out some of those enemy Lodgy pilots, um, or even just keeping those Lodgy pilots healing each other rather than the, the enemies that were in the bubbles. As that was happening, Pantheon was able to leverage their own Lodgy, which were largely unharassed. Um, I think that was, again, thanks to our larger numbers, we were able to, to help keep some of that clear. As a result of that, they were able to focus on their Guardians and Battleships so that they were able to, to really keep their ships alive and in the fight longer than some of the no uh, ships that were on grid. Now the last thing here is as the fleet was disengaging we had some phenomenal Dictor pilots that were dropping our own bubbles and this kept those uh, those battleships and battle cruisers on field so that we were able to once it was kind of obvious where the, the fight was going we were able to actually uh, clean those up 
and take them out of the fight so that it again hopefully it's going to cost a little bit more for the enemy to get those back into the fight and take up resources that they're not going to be able to use elsewhere obviously with insurance it's not as big of a deal but it every little bit helps right with all of that being said we were able to push the uh, station into a whole timer. That fight is going to be coming up this weekend. I'm hoping that I'm able to take part in it because um, this was a lot of fun, but um, we'll see what happens just based off of uh, schedules and real life things because I might have something kind of fun coming up. <laughs> fun, crazy, I'm not sure. We'll see. I'm sure you guys will hear about it next week. Either way, thanks so much for joining. Big, big, big thank you to Lucas uh, for the footage. Um, really do appreciate you sent this to me so that I was able to get a couple of different uh, looks at this and, and help illustrate some of what was going on. You the real MVP, man. Appreciate you. So thanks again, everybody. As always, like, subscribe, do the things. And until next time, fly safe.